Last summer, my brother bought a crusty old Alice Chalmers HD5 crawler loader, and I made a video where I helped him move that machine from a field where it sat, we think, for at least 17 years back to his house. I'll roll a montage here. What's Dad doing? Bringing home some more junk. No. Treasures. It's been sitting here for how long? Oh, since I was in high school. 15 years, I suppose. 15 years? You don't know the last time it ran? Not sure. No, 271. 271 Detroit. So it's a little two-cylinder, two-stroke Detroit engine. Yeah. Tracks aren't too bad. You think they turn? Oh, I, I moved them. Oh, yeah, run them by tomorrow. That used to mean to make sure that rack's not stuck or the injectors aren't stuck. Right injector is stuck. Got it's got a The thing. injector is stuck. See this here? That shuts the air off. Oh, okay. Good. That's what. That's all you need to do. People go bananas on the YouTube if you use a screwdriver as a pry bar. So just tell everybody that's a pry bar. Yep. We don't know what year the machine was built. We think sometime around 1950, so it's about 70 years old. We also don't know the last time that it ran. The only clue we really have is that there was a battery in the machine with a date code of 2003. We don't know if it was installed in 2003. We also don't know if the machine ran when that battery was installed. That's just the only clue that we have. Uh, mechanically, it's got a lot of problems. The engine is free, but it will not make a complete revolution. So mechanically, something is binding it, and attempts to free that up have not been successful. Also, the steering clutches are both frozen, and one of the steering brakes is frozen. So when we pulled it on the machine on the truck, the the track on one side basically just we had to drag it. Um, my brother has done some work on the engine. I think some of the exhaust valves were frozen. He got those loosened up, but the mechanical problem required him to remove the head. And what he found is that one of the valves, the heads of the valves, had actually broken off, and the valve head was sitting on top of the piston and getting bound between the piston and the cylinder head. So he took the head to a machine shop. I believe they pressure tested it, made sure it didn't have any leaks, and then they installed two new valves and two new seats. The engine is a 271 Detroit diesel engine, so it's a two-cycle, two-cylinder diesel engine. And on these engines, they're a little bit different than what you're used to. The valves that you see on the top with the push rods and the rocker arms and stuff, those are all exhaust valves. There really are no intake valves. It's done with ports in the sides of the cylinders. And really the only settings that are required are for the exhaust valves and for the injectors. Uh, anyway, he, he told me that he's got the head back and he's got the head installed on the engine with a new head gasket. So we're going to set the valves and the injectors, set up the rack and see if we can get the engine to run. Now, fair warning, this is going to be kind of a down and dirty video. There's no point throwing a bunch of money into this machine that I'm sure he'll never get back. We just want to see if it's going to run. So we're going to throw it together and make sure we don't have any kind of runaway situation. And hopefully it will start and run. There's a slot in it right here. So Okay, so you want me to bar it over while you watch this thing? No, I'll bar it over. All right. I'll let you have all the fun. No, I can't. Okay, so if you uh, look from the top in that thing, there's a there's a slot in the in the pulley. Yeah. Okay. And I think there's one on the other side. Okay. I believe. Okay, well, the valve started coming back up. Okay. So that must be the bottom of the stroke. Well, you want me to back up some? Uh, you might want to. We'll go back past and then come back around. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Keep going. More. More. Keep going. 
Okay, now you can go back the way you were going. moving that's got to be the bottom of the stroke okay okay that's it that's it okay so tell us what we're doing setting valves on what this old piece of junk so it's a 271 detroit diesel right yes and we don't know very much about detroit diesels just enough to be sort of dangerous so we've set one set of valves and one injector now we're doing the other set of valves and the opposite injector this one appears to be good. What's the last? 20 thousandths? 12. 12 thousandths. Of course, a claw hammer usually is uh, required for valve adjustment. Just trying to make sure there's no dirt in there. I think he replaced <laughs> this valve and this valve. Okay. <clears throat> So many bees around here. Uh -huh. All right, so tell us what work's been done. Uh, I tried to get it to go. <clears throat> it would turn so far and stop. Right. Uh, I took the cover off of the side. The airbox cover. The one where you can see through the piston ports. Right. And you could see something in there. So I determined it was a valve. Right. And I took the head off, and it was in fact a valve. I have it around here somewhere. Uh, anyways, it did a little bit of damage to the head, nothing serious. Piston looked fine. Uh, that's not anything I did. It was like that when I got it, which I know everybody says that, but it's true. <clears throat> uh, so I took it off, took it to a, a shop, and they put two new valves and two new seats in it. Okay. And was the seat actually dropped out of the head or was it just it's cracked it was cracked and then the valve actually broke or it was Correct. stuck no it was broke okay so what happened is the head of the valve broke off and got between the piston and the top of the head you could turn it over but only so far right so and it wouldn't turn anymore so he took the head off had the head reconditioned um he's installed the head with a new head gasket and we're just getting ready to set the valves and the injectors and the rack and then possibly get it to run. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> we ain't touching that. <laughs> yeah, so the spec is 1.484, right? Correct. Yeah. That was 1.483. Okay. This one ended up 1.483 and a half, so we're not touching that. So what he's doing is setting the injector timing. He's basically setting the height of the injector from the top of the head. Yep. And that, that basically limits the total stroke of the injector. You just do it with a... There's a fancy tool, but... Yeah, we're just using the depth mic. We ain't got one of those. So, so it's, it's currently within 1,000th. We're going to leave it alone. Yeah, it's it's probably within about... Well, now that I wiped it off, it's within about a quarter thousandth. Okay. Not touching that. Nope, looks good. Okay. Okay, so now... Now we got to put the rack together. Yes. And put the fuel delivery tubes on. So we're assembling, what do we think, the throttle linkage mm -hmm. and the shutdown system. It's kind of weird. I don't know, I dropped a screwdriver. <laughs> I said once, I was going to make a compilation of me dropping things on the YouTube and I was like, nobody's going to watch a two hour long video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's weird. Huh, that is weird. Alright, so we bounced the rack. Got the injectors set. Well, I should explain what I mean by bouncing the rack. So on these two-cycle Detroits, they have unit injectors. There's no injection pump. Each injector basically is its, is its own pump. And the fuel delivery is controlled by a rod that comes out the side of the injector and it turns a cam inside the injector and controls the amount of fuel. For all intents and purposes, that's the throttle. Now, each of those rods coming out of the injectors is connected to a rack, and the rack has levers that come in here and pull the, the rods out. 
And when you bounce a rack, what I mean is you're, you're using those two big flathead screws that you see on the levers to basically make sure that the, the injectors are adjusted the same so that they all hit full fuel at the same time. So it's very easy on this 271 because there's only two cylinders. You set cylinder one and then just match cylinder number two to that. Uh, the other danger with these Detroits is that the, the rack can get stuck. So what happens is the, the plungers coming out of the side of the injectors get stuck. And sometimes they get stuck in the full fuel position. And because all the injectors are connected together through the rack, it basically locks the engine in at full throttle. And that's how you get a runaway. Throttle linkage is installed. Now we're hooking up some batteries. We don't have any way to prime the fuel system because there's no priming pump. Stand by. I'll be damned, there's fuel coming out of that freaking thing. Primed up? Keep it PG 13? That freaking thing. Keep it Canadian. <laughs> It's okay. I learned how to. I learned how to blank out bad words. I had to. I had to do that on a recent video. I wasn't paying attention. All right, hook her up. Let's start this thing. You'll notice throughout the video we're having a lot of problems with the starter. So you can hear the starter spin, but it's not turning over the engine. The problem is with the drive mechanism. So on a on a modern starter, the way that it works is when you turn the key, it powers the starter solenoid. The solenoid provides power to the starter, it's a switch, but it also provides a mechanical motion to the drive gear to engage the gear with the, the flywheel. On this old crawler, it's all mechanical. So when you want to start this machine, you push a control lever, and the control lever basically closes a great big switch on the starter, and it also it controls, I think, some kind of a fork, like a yoke, and that mechanically engages the drive gear to the flywheel and that part of it doesn't seem to be working all the time. So you see we're, we're using crowbars and various things to try to get that that yoke to engage the flywheel and when it works it turns over fine but it just doesn't want to reliably engage. <laughs> That compression. See oil. It's oiling. I can't see the gauge. You must have oil pressure because I see oil in the oil in the in the valve train here. Oh yeah, we got fuel. Sure, lots of fuel. Uh, hell, I think it's gonna go. Smoking on that cylinder, anyway. I crack the other one loose. I don't want to do that because that other one, that one went on hard. I don't want to have to. We'll see if we can get one that should smooth out. The one furthest this way. It didn't go on very easy. Yeah, you're smoking on both cylinders now. If we had some RPMs, it would run. Trying. Yeah, 
Give it a little more fuel. I got it maxed. I got it on full throttle. Yeah, but it's not it's not coming up. She ain't trying to go. There you go. Come on, baby. It's not enough battery. Nope. Shut off. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now it's open. <laughs> we'll start with the shut off closed. Wants to go. Yeah, but you see all that black smoke. That's not ether. This ain't quite got enough fuel to do it. Either. Yeah, not enough fuel, not enough battery.
10 years? I graduated high school in 15 years? Awesome, I, that was way too easy. Awesome. Get up in there and start her. Turn the key. What a sweetheart. Might as well sell that cat. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we were just talking, we don't think it started since 2003. 17 years. At least 2003. So it sounds pretty good. I think we only had one cylinder when we first started it up, but it's getting better, closer got, to two cylinders. Got the other one now, I think. Yeah, I think so too. It's, it's starting to kind of idle. Uh, I didn't bleed that one, so. 
Yeah, we had an injector line that was kind of iffy, so we didn't want to try to bleed the air out of that one. So there's no coolant and there's no exhaust manifold, so we don't want to run it for too long. But yeah, it's pretty cold out today, so I don't think we'll have a problem. Uh, it's starting to get kind of warm, so I'd down. Where's that exhaust manifold? <coughs> This is what's left of the exhaust manifold. It's basically a lost cause. So probably we'll just take this flange and make some kind of a new, a new thing out of some steel plates or something. So we're kind of thinking that maybe what happened is they tried to start it and the rack was stuck. One of the injectors the was stuck two open. The injector was stuck open. Yeah, so one of the injectors was stuck open. So we're thinking that maybe it ran away. It busted the valve and, and shut the whole thing. Yeah, it down. dropped a valve and then came to a very abrupt stop. I was able to work the injector long enough to get it freed up. Yeah. So, and it seems to work. So. That's good. We, we weren't sure about the injector because the injector survived that or went through that valve dropping ordeal. Somebody went and threw a battery in it and tried to start it. That injector was stuck open and ran away, and then it floated the valve, and the rest is history. Right. That's our theory anyway. We don't we don't know for sure. Right. The valve stem might have been rusty or something, you know, who knows. But it definitely dropped a valve and busted the, the stem off, the head off the stem of the valve, and came to a very quick stop. Okay. I think it's moving now. Well, that generator is locked up. I think it's fixed now. Fixed. Percussive maintenance. Man, I'll have to edit out the part where this is a screwdriver. Can you edit in the... Like a chisel? <laughs> I'll add it in a brass chisel. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I think that'll go. If I could get the belt, I guess I could probably really try it. Oh, oh it is loose. Hole in the radiator. Just gonna try to catch that. Yeah. That might not be very much fun to get out. No. Okay. Well, I'm probably done for the day. Get back home. Oh, there she goes.
Okay, let's wrap this up. So, it runs. I could set on an air hose. Try that again. So what year is this? We don't know. No later than 53, no earlier than 47. So we've got a 1950 something Alice Chalmers HD6. Been sitting since 2000. HD5. HD5, sorry. Sitting since 2004. Five, three, early 2000s. Early 2000s. 271 Detroit diesel, and we had the head. The head was repaired, put back on, and it runs. Hydraulics seem to work, but we don't have enough oil to get the the boom to raise. the The scarifier works, the ripper works, but the the front hydraulics don't seem to want to work. And there's a hole in the radiator. Uh, the generator turns, but it doesn't charge, so probably the voltage regulator is bad. Uh, one of the track clutches is stuck. And the brake. And the brake. Uh, let's see. One of the tracks is worn out, the other track is good, but it's off. It's kind of not lined up right. So anyway, needs some work, but it runs. That's step one. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. It's fun working on this old machine. And you can take the whole thing apart with a hammer, a flathead screwdriver, and a 916 wrench. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. He's got to get the radiator patched up. And if he gets that done, we can try to work on getting the steering clutches broken loose and see about that one steering brake. And at that point, it should be functional. I think the hydraulics will go. It just needs more oil. Uh, anyway, I'll try to make some follow-up videos. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.